How do you draw four-dimensional objects? How do you even make the models to begin with? Well, it's complicated, but also really elegant, so let's jump into it. Normal 3D objects are made of triangles because it's the simplest shape that can build a surface. 4D objects, on the other hand, are made of tetrahedra for the same reason. You need 3D volumes to enclose a hypervolume. Unfortunately, almost every 3D modeling software is, well, 3D, with triangle meshes, so I don't have a lot of options for tools. Basically, just these categories. In the first category, one of the tools I can use is called Miratope. It's open source and designed to work with 4D shapes, though it's just for highly symmetric polytopes, so there's not too much I can do with it. But if I need, say, a 600 cell, which I use for the golf ball, it's a really easy way to generate that. The next category is the most straightforward. I can use any 3D modeler and then just write some algorithm to bring it into four dimensions. Extrusion is the simplest to explain. It's exactly how you'd bring a 2D shape into 3D by extending it into the new dimension. But in this case, we start with a 3D object and extend it into the fourth dimension. It's also not hard to generate pyramids, truncated pyramids, revolutions, and so on. There's even a new 4D specific one called a duo prism, where one 2D mesh extrudes along another 2D mesh perpendicularly, but it's a little hard to visualize. I'll leave a link to a great video on these techniques, so check that out later. But even the most basic extrusion is much more complicated than you'd think. Back to the 3D example, to actually build a prism, we need to triangulate the mesh first. That's easy on 2D surfaces, most modeling software will do this for you automatically. But tetrahedronalizing your 3D mesh is not something they usually do. And the problem is a much harder one too. Polygons can be triangulated without needing to add extra vertices, but that's not true for 3D meshes. In fact, if you want to find the best tetrahedralization with the fewest tetrahedra, it's actually an NP-hard problem. Luckily, there's a simple but slightly inefficient way to do it. If you can find a point in the mesh that can reach all the other vertices without intersection, I can use that as one vertex with the other three from each triangle of the mesh. I'm not sure what that property is called. It's something more general than convex, but anyway. If the mesh is more complicated, like, say, this golf club, I just manually split it into multiple meshes that have the property, and then combine them afterwards. The last category is what I use for the golf track. I'd probably do this even if it was a normal 3D game, because there's hundreds of track pieces with different sizes, walls, curves, and so on. No way am I going to manually model every single combination. Instead, I just define the parameters I need for each piece, and then generate the vertices from code. Of course, that code is absolutely massive and complicated, but it's totally worth it for the time it saves. Okay, so I can make 40 models, but to render them, we have to battle my arch nemesis, the traditional render pipeline. Yeah, everything in your GPU is optimized for rendering triangles in 3D. Well, almost. For practical reasons, GPUs do at least have data structures for 4D vectors and matrices, so at least I don't have to rewrite that. Also, those 3D shadows I use are like 4D wireframes, so they're basically just lists of triangles, which are dead simple to draw. The challenge comes with a slicing view, since it uses tetrahedra. First of all, I need to actually send tetrahedra to the GPU, but there's no such primitive I can use. Fortunately, we're not drawing these tetrahedra, we're only going to draw slices of them, which become polygons. So we could slice them first on the CPU before sending them to the GPU, but slicing hundreds of thousands of tetrahedra would be extremely slow. We definitely want to do the slicing on the GPU. Let's analyze one of these slices. When you have a 4D tetrahedron sliced by a 3D space, 
you end up with either zero, one, or two triangles, depending on the slice. Exactly like slicing a 3D tetrahedron with a 2D plane. So at most, each tetrahedron needs two triangles spanning four vertices. Knowing that, I can build my mesh by converting the tetrahedra to these triangle pairs. Each vertex has a full copy of the tetrahedron data and a vertex ID, so I can use that to figure out where it needs to be placed and if it needs to be drawn at all. All right, so everything is offloaded to the GPU. Now here comes the hard part. Figuring out where these vertices would go and which ones should be turned on or off is really complicated because there's so many combinations and edge cases of how the slice can be cut. Originally, I had a big mess of nested if statements like five or six layers deep, which is the antithesis of good GPU code. But then I came up with one of the most beautiful optimizations I've ever thought of. So if there's a slice, the vertex is going to be on a line between two vertices of the tetrahedron, each of which is on one side or the other of the hyperplane. Abstractly, we know which output vertex we're working on from its ID, and which side of the hyperplane each tetrahedron vertex is in. What we want to know is which two vertices to interpolate between, and if this is even a slice at all. That's an input of two bits of information for the vertex ID, and four for the hyperplane sides, meaning there's only 64 combinations. So I created a global 8x8 lookup texture that I used those bits to look up into. The output is an RGB encoding where the channels represent the two tetrahedron indices to interpolate and whether or not it should be drawn. Now I can brute force the lookup table offline and it looks like this. Isn't that beautiful? and it removed 100% of the conditional logic. That allows me to render millions of tetrahedra, even on low-end computers. So that's it for this devlog. Thanks everyone for all the support, and don't forget to wishlist 40Golf on Steam. I'll see you all in the next devlog.